Welcome. This is the August 7th Open ZFS production user call. We have Andrew, Stu, Greg, and myself so far, and I have news. The Open ZFS User and Developer Summit is open for registration and sponsorship. I have been frantically updating the wiki, and you can go to Eventbrite for registration. Uh, that somehow has a cached logo, but such is life. So if you check out the wiki, it's got a new logo, unlike the cached one you saw briefly. And traditionally, they've been doing for just over a decade, a Monday, Tuesday developer summit and hackathon. But after many, many conversations, especially with those present, uh, we've collectively proposed a two day user summit beforehand. And these topics are in the doc. I will talk about them in a second. Uh, we are looking for sponsors. Thank you, Digital Glue and its partners and brands. It sounds like that may change. Thank you, Stu, for stepping up to the table early on. And uh, what else? I'm excited, and I will be spending the next few months on this. And Santi has just presented. Welcome, Santi. Hello, hello. Santi, do you have any topics? We're going to talk quite a bit about the Developer Summit and User Summit, which uh, went live yesterday. Uh, no, I don't have anything. I've been uh, okay. Pretty go ahead and listen in. Cool. Uh, I've got links here. I'll drop them in chat. The uh, User and Developer Summit was unveiled officially yesterday, and registration is open. And we are definitely looking for sponsors. We have some interested folks lined up. And again, thank you, Stu and company. So that said, I've been now having a moment to noodle over the format. And I do want to be pretty hybrid in focusing on a topic, uh, being interactive, a bit of an unconference topic uh, format, but where the topics are prearranged. And I've got that list up there. We can look at that in seconds. So I just belted this out a minute ago, but... I'm thinking a 10 to 15 minute presentation on, hey, what's the state of, say, pulling a topic out of thin air, uh, trusted partner network compliance, which is an MPAA Hollywood thing. What's that look like from a storage perspective? Here's what we've done as an organization. An expert stands up and does that. Then we take, say, 30 minutes to go interactive on the topic. And then at the very end, uh, belt out our wish lists and maybe even go darn near auction format. Hey, yeah, our organization would probably want to sponsor that, 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 and just keep it fast paced and actionable. Any feedback on that so far? No, good start. Good start. Okay, so let's look hey, at topics. Yes, Andrew. Biggest question I um, I would have is um, how, how are we for um, connectivity at the venue for being able to hook to get people interacting who cannot physically be there. Yes. So that was one of the top complaints last year was that for the hackathon, people were only able to see Slack and it's like, Hey, hello, I'm here. Uh, how do I participate? So uh, I've been discussing with a number of people about how to have both streaming for everything and then perhaps a be it station in back where one can sort of big screen interactively talk to people. Um, so I just wrapped up Fosse here in town and the open signal PDX people did an amazing job of streaming and capturing that. They handle the Portland city council meetings and they perhaps have the most sophisticated rig in the country. So I hope to meet with them Friday and discuss options upon options. Uh, folks like those on the call can help them with storage and they can help all of us with AV. So uh, that was a, I got mind blowing mind numps from them on topics and hardware and software and you name it. So that's an invaluable resource that should guarantee pretty good compatible uh, streamability and telepresence. So looking at topics, um, uh, our regular viewers will have heard these come up over the last few months, and I don't know if we'll have time for this many topics, but I really want to narrow in on some of them. Uh, some of them are just, hey, a developer looked at a specific thing. I'll nudge Matt about that and see if 
Uh, if there's anything new on, say, he, the continuous replication he mentioned once upon a time at BSD CAN, and also Rob and Alan on the native overlay whiteout FS. There was a comment just recently that um, in the TrueNAS scale announcement, I'll scroll down to that for you. They're like, hey, yeah, we've modified uh, ZFS for, for that. And so I'm trying to get some facts on that. I've reached out to Alexander Moten, but here's the forum post link on that, which said, hey, we've modified. Uh, ZFS has been modified to support Docker overlay FS to better handle snapshots from containerized applications. I don't know what that means in practice yet, but so that, go ahead. That's um, uh, that's interesting because uh, so one of the things uh, with Docker hosts uh, that I've used for uh, to get an environment that's sort of similar to the backup environment I was used to with, with ZFS uh, was uh, making use of B3FS um, and that um, existing, I don't know, module or whatever it is with uh, with Docker that allows you to take advantage of B3FS snapshotting and a bunch of tools within the container itself, um, mm -hmm. which was not otherwise available, which you can do as in so, as long as the binary for Docker uh, was on a B3FS file system. So this seems like, hey, um, we can do that with ZFS too. Um, you know, back to uh, zero, several million B3FS to CFS. <laughs> yeah, are you thinking that might be what they're using or that's a similar approach? Um, so that, uh, when when you described that, that sounded that it sounded almost exactly like uh, like that use case um, for, for making use uh, within the container of that um, file system and the, you know, uh, features of that file system. Um, okay. And that that had already existed for for a while, um, so I don't know how new that um, integration is for the, the FreeNAS people. But um, it sounds okay. like hey, a lot of people complained and said hey, you know, Docker can do this on that on Fedora. Why can't I do that on my nice storage appliance? Got it. Uh, is there some place for one stop shopping on that to have see that in action? Like appliance foo is doing it regularly. Uh, you know what? Give me a minute. I'm going to look into Drop it. Any links you is. have just sure. for our collective enlightenment. So, okay, that's good to hear. So I, here's a perfect example of a topic that I'm just trying to chisel away at and narrow in on and say, okay, you know, here's what's available. Here's what's clearly not available. Here's what looks like the shortest path to that. And uh, hopefully on the last day, hand such topics over to the developers and say, hey, this these are re 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 reconsidered ideas that we pretty much all agree are pretty important and here's why and maybe here's some funding and let's just keep this moving forward so yeah grab your links on that drop them in there as you please or chat i'll kind of ping pong back and forth to from the list to there um the land and wind networking has come up in a dozen forms so how we narrow in on that will be determined from recent calls and thank you greg for pushing this mixed operating system support it's like well out of necessity or desire we have to support say linux and freebsd or even them plus plus uh illumos and i'm adding to that uh just the formative topic which to some degree i can talk about uh zfs on non-unix system because when we look at say the trifecta of Linux, FreeBSD, and Illumos. Well, uh, I've been running G Mac OS ZFS since the Zevo code long ago. So I don't know if that's also of interest, but uh, let's in the back of our heads think about who might want to represent that topic. Uh, very much a hot topic. Well, I don't have a great way of describing it, but machine readable and writable open ZFS, JSON, SNMP, REST, and all those mechanisms. And Greg, you, again, you've had some great input on that for say your SNMP graphs and such. Those who have the doc in front of them can scroll down for pretty pictures. Um, as I touched on earlier, uh, things like MPAA TPN compliance is a sort of hard golden check box for people to check, but that often ties into security encryption and key management. And I believe there was a developer summit 
key management talk that was scheduled years ago, but didn't happen because of either illness or travel issues or something. So that's never quite been really painted as a picture at the at the event. Uh, from these calls, channel programs, uh, they seem to be missing a few very useful things, which is preventing use for some folks. Uh, we can think about who might be our expert on that. Uh, naturally, all things extreme Z. Uh, Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, unfortunately, probably our best expert on that is going to be on because he seems programs? to be the or huh on channel programs. Channel programs. Okay. Because he he seems to be the person who's slamming into the missing elements the hardest. Uh, yes, and Daniel. So I'll okay put both on there because Daniel's like okay, well, with say Zelta, what do what do both ends of the the picture look like? So good point. That that's fair. But yeah, no, amen. And channel programs came out of somewhere. We should. Uh, uh, where did they originate? Because someone sat down and said, we need this originate. Uh, and they've not, that person has, or organization has not been very vocal lately. So a little history would be good there. And I can nudge uh, Matt or watch the history on the you know repo. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know who it came from, but I imagine everything that they wanted to get out of it is there and that's they why they're it. not yes. very vocal that is a very plausible observation on that so i believe do you mention an exciting new aic jbod i will reach out to them but i think some amount of on-site hardware would be good we have a small office off the main stage where we could have a little lab um uh, I, for those with companies, think about what your company might be able to loan to the organization or to the event, rather. Um, and I will nudge Matt on his continuous replication blackboard sketch from BSD Can that, that uh, was intriguing, uh, but I don't know if anything came of it. And let's see, uh, Rob Norris has some ideas on user space, open ZFS. So I'll just nudge him on that. Uh, I brought it up recently, this whole notion of using the OpenZFS DMU as an object store with zero POSIX access is pretty fascinating. I don't know if much has been done beyond Luster, so I'll do a little homework there on, or y'all welcome to reach out too. But um, that link describes the one the canonical thing I found. And that excites me because, well, what does that mean for, say, S3 storage on ZFS or other object stores? Uh, no, please don't reinvent RAID on top of that. Okay, Datto has been searched. Yes. Yes, and Datto hosted the a user event a few years back for what it's worth, and we thank them for that. Do, 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 do. Um, this, as I mentioned, was stri strictly nudging Rob and Alan about what some proof of concept that Alan had on the native whiteout. Um, here's one that's, that is new insofar as uh, there is a SNEA solid state storage performance test suite and various implementations of it in various languages from PHP to this to that to you name it. Uh, following up on a cross-platform talk a few years back, uh, it was not clear what any two users of OpenZFS will use as a common benchmark. There's a built-in uh, test suite for the raw functionality, but uh, if you have a shiny new array and you want some vague smoke test of its performance to tell management, yep, it's 20% faster than the last one, so we can justify that cost. I would love to hope the four of you right here and now, do you have tools that you turn to and start with and can pretty safely say this is our our smoke test metric? Of course, all benchmarks are wrong and you, everyone's doing it wrong and et cetera, et cetera. But um, thoughts there? I got to remember what the one we were using was. It was like... 
you know, so uh, plus I mean, plus I, and FIO and you know, workload yeah. simulation, but I've never seen a giant repo of workloads to simulate. <laughs> Go ahead, Stu. Bios one, what I just posted was Stu spelled wrong tools, which was one of the guys behind Nereid. Um, yeah, okay. He built them, um, used those for some some really random type of stuff, but they it gives pretty good output for reporting and graphing. So I can, you know, tweak a, tweak it, you know, tweak and figs, run it for a couple hours, validate each, you know, read speed, write speed, number of biops, all that kind of jazz. Um, that is intriguing. Those, um, those are the couple that are are my go-tos. Nice. Let's take a look. And Stu, as in, like you said, a misspelling or a different Stu? <laughs> different, different Stu. <laughs> okay, cool. Apache 2.0 license, and let's talk language. It's hit a release two years ago, and it's written in... Drum roll, please. C Roth C make shell Docker file. Okay. Uh 0.0% Docker file. Okay, fine, fine. So 0.0% so HTML. Good. Like Very that. good to know. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. We've covered oh, all I got a lot of automations, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh just run the thing. Okay, it's and like what a, you know, OSs have I'm, you run this on? Oh, okay, libaio dev. That might be a bit Linuxy. Yeah, that's uh, yep. Value to devil. Okay, so you two two major flavors of Linux right there. Oh, it says CentOS down there. So, uh, what's CentOS, Grandpa? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, CentOS eight stream is still around. It's a it's a thing. It is. It for, is. Sub, for the freaks who want it. Um, <laughs> I have opinions. <laughs> Do you? And my yeah, we all have, we all have those opinions. <laughs> I included a local tattoo removal place if you need to remove a scent. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep um, crossing it out and putting the, the, the compatibles and then crossing those out. So like that meme with like, you know, friendship ended with sent to us. Uh, Rocky is my new best friend. Oh, I haven't seen that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, it sounds very Linuxy, but I, I I'm intrigued. Uh, uh, so go ahead, Stu. It yeah. is very Linuxy, yeah. and I've actually got a Google Sheets macro to go and parse out the output. Nice <laughs> to graph it. So mm -hmm. cursed, absolutely cursed, but yep. awesome. <laughs> no, nope. that's awesome. We yep. roll. Oh, here we go. We're talking uh, SNEA common tests, putting on my SNEA hat here. Oh, good to hear. And yeah, it was interesting. There was a comment that like, oh, the spec was great and then vendors messed it up. So in fact, when people were blasting out in their language of choice, their SNEA SSS TTS implementation, there was a brief heyday. And now it's a question of, well, does, is that Python library still working and you name it. So this is close to my heart in all that free time I've got. So it, uh, it takes it takes about three minutes to compile. Got it. After the prereqs are in, but cool. That's one takes, I've it, never heard of, and it's inspector. Go ahead. Yeah, there there's a little Polish notation in some of it, but yeah, we'll figure it out. Cool. <laughs> uh, um, in the past, I've used IOZone. I have Just in the past as well, and I've we went away from it. There was something in route wasn't consistent in some of the tests where file was. Between actually it's between Linux versions, different versions of Ubuntu, you okay. know, 16, 18, 20, 22, it was giving different results on the same hardware. <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, I will keep, maybe I've not found it yet and it totally exists, but if FIO is active and so proudly a workload simulation tool, I want to find that repo of workloads. And it's like, oh, here's what 
a mail server looks like. Here's where uh, what video editing looks like. Here's what thing looks like. So at least we have a fixed point of reference. You know, the Kobayashi Maru, whatever they call it. Here's the standard test. Let's aim it at Kobayashi Maru. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, please. Please correct me there. Yes. <laughs> explain me please the, uh, he's, he's a, he just plays a nerd on tv he's not a real nerd it's yeah. true no me too that's the one thing i you know and i gotta be smug about it because it's the one thing that i know okay <laughs> uh i ultimately moved on to expands but go ahead i was i was going to say ultimately the reason that i ended up you know that i did testing using iozone is it happened to work in Illumos. so uh, that's a very good point and yeah you, you some know, of the that, other that, ones that. were at least not available readily. I mean, I could probably have have made them work, but yes, there's a so question. With Fufio, I clearly remember like, oh, you don't have the AIO module on this. You have the POSIX, POSIX module on these three of five OSs. And the, yeah, no, good good point. Yeah. Um, have any of you run... Open ZFS on a non Unix platform, and I'll put Mac OS in that department because hey, it's all graphic-y. And... Other than you, <laughs> yeah, I said you. Uh, <laughs> you. I, I I've had to do some um, gross things in Linux uh, a million years ago, uh, mm -hmm. but also also recently because I had a Hetzner um, FreeBSD box uh, that I messed up, um, okay. and their recovery environment did not have. Obviously, doesn't have FreeBSD, uh, at least not for their their bare metal um, offerings. Okay. Um, and so, uh, writing a dirty script that I think I threw away, but writing a dirty script to quickly bootstrap uh, the ZFS uh, module in I think it was Debian, um, so that I could then mount the things and fix the thing that I had broken, and then reboot back into uh, FreeBSD without everything being broken. Cool. I will chalk that up as Unix, but I hear you. But you do make a good point of pragmatic recovery and, oh, gosh, it, well, recovery is, is which, its own. Which kind of cleaves nicely form. into um, a question that I had. And this might have been talked about in other, um, other conferences. But has anybody done sort of like a report card for ZFS support? Um, and I guess by extension, well, no, just ZFS support would be a good report card for uh, different VPS providers. Oh, that's um, nice. okay. Just to say, hey, look, here's the state of who will support and who won't. Because Hetzner, strictly speaking, is like, well, we don't support FreeBSD. But like, if you go into their recovery environment, one of the many ISOs that they have preloaded is a FreeBSD one. Um, and so, I don't know. It's uh, just second tier. Yeah, it's, uh, right. it's like not point. officially supported. Um, and uh, my soon-to-be former employer, um, same same sort of deal, you know, uh, because of underlying sort of technical legacy stuff. Uh, no no ZFS unless you are, um, you know, rolling your own custom ISO and or, yeah, or, BYO, and and then you just all of the other niceties and off-the-shelf products are just not compatible. So they're all ext four based or ext four cringe, if you will. Uh do you have any? Do you have a list of successes? Be it, I believe, rsync.net having a ZFS offering. rsync.net uh, does have a ZFS offering yeah, for sure, but they're not. Um, but they're not. But they're not doing VPS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a cloud provider of some kind. Is there like a an A list that we can branch out from? Like rsync, yay. Um, maybe Vulture. Not sure. Yeah, Vult, uh, Vulture, uh, or is it Vulture or Volter? They Vulture, probably would prefer yeah, that we yeah, call it Volter, but Vulture, probably, yes. But <laughs> I will always. Well, well Microsoft um, WSL Weasel, like, right? Yeah, hey, you know, it's their own fault. Um, we don't name it that. Um, but uh, yeah, so it'd be, let's see. So there's Volter. Uh, DigitalOcean uh, would get an F because they, they had free BST support and then they uh, yeah they, uh, ate it. Yeah. Um, We'll totally give you an Illumos zone if you want. Well, Honest, uh, honestly, honestly, company. I mean, we're all CFS. Nuts. Honestly, we'll probably give you, if you, if you asked for it, we would probably hook you up with BSD, and you know, okay, cool. but 
you'd have to talk to our support. Sure. Dominic. So that's Sanders company. Um, so rsync.net, I mean, uh, a, Amazon has sales. a DFS ish solution. So I'll say AWS Z something they call it. Uh, AWS has something and that was at the dev summit. So, uh, does someone want to take it upon themselves to come up with at least a survey of what's out there without even yet regarding a nifty rating? Uh, well, I think we'd have to figure out what, what we mean by this, right? Because strictly speaking, every single one of these that lets you roll your own ISO yeah. has quote unquote support for ZFS, right? But like what would constitute like first class support, right? So like R6 thing where they have a product that is built around it, that could be first class, right? Um, yep. Anything that has like tighter infrastructure integration than, yeah, sure. If you want to put it in your box, that's cool, I guess. Yeah. Um, Knock yourself out backed by yeah. flaky storage that doesn't have any of the guarantees because, well. Yeah, it's, it's all turtles <laughs> all the way down. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah, I, starting I can, with um, the notion of first class around. providers, and let's start with cloud providers, but because, of course, you know, gee, Seagate hard drive support. ZFS, <laughs> but avoid the SMR. <laughs> Let's not yet go there unless we have a good case to do it. So sure, if anyone wants to just build a list and drop them in the dock or present in some way, that that's uh, that's attractive insofar as if someone is tasked with m moving a workload or storage load to ZFS on the cloud and they just know that their boss is asking for it and has a budget. It's like, well, okay, where do they start? <laughs> where, what does that look like? Because, yeah, we should. Oh, and of course, I don't know if the wiki is up to date in any regard relating to uh, vendors, but let's say uh, wiki hackathon. That's where, you know, the, uh, a developer hackathon is a wonderful thing, but there are softer topics that often need addressing open CFS wiki hackathon. So I'll put that in there. And that's also something that us users can do a hell of a lot better than developers can. Documentation often, yeah. is important. Yep. And it's <laughs> something that developers hate doing as a rule. Okay. Well, they have to deal with people like me. So, I mean, I can't really blame them. <laughs> um, okay. I like that. I like that. And that I spent the last hackathon trying to find why, why encryption made no sense. And then I found when they rearranged the manual pages, they didn't cross-reference one single important page. I thought, okay, I found the smoking gun at the very end. Like, okay. We need to mention this one or else the other docs make no sense. So that kind of thing is what users bump into. Uh, and that is totally justification to hang around for the, you know, the, the final day hackathon if you can. Uh, so, uh, okay, we'll make it a 10 day event now that we have so many topics. <laughs> <laughs> Festival. Uh, open festival. ZFS festival. Oh, how Bring did that go, Stu? Now, it's a little off topic, but there was, what, a, a, a progressive music fest or something? Mm -hmm. Experimental music? Pickathon. Yes. They, they captured 22 terabytes of content over four days. That was the perfect metric. I will now judge events based on that. <laughs> <You> know, terabytes, <laughs> Ter terabytes of content. Yeah, yeah ju ju judging a, a terabytes, a, terabytes of, <laughs> is too reasonable of unit. You have you have to go to um, percentage of oil, of uh, ocean boiled off yeah. huh. by flipping the bets. This, this music is better than this music because it has more. It's a it's a bigger. Therefore, therefore, it's better music. <laughs> there you go. Uh, cool. Uh, Libraries of Congress was a. It is the legacy unit, of course. You just had to, you just had to be there, man. <laughs> How redundant was that content, and was it on ZFS? Yes, it was on ZFS. Oh, sweet. It was, it was you, on. You could deduplicate um, like the entire discography of, of most electronic music genres like down to a couple of gigabytes, probably. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's a, it depends on how, how far you extract it. Yeah. yeah and atonal music would take up, you know, just petabytes and petabytes of space, right? It's entropy versus anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are there any fans here of lightning talks where one just brain dumps for five minutes or so? Yes, absolutely. I think it's the best way to interact with excited nerds is to give them five minutes to just what is your unique fascination uh, and can we give you an avenue to, to subject people to it willingly for once. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm at your taps on your cubicle and uh, <laughs> yeah. like a deer in headlights. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So lightning talks is in what, five to ten minutes? Oh, yeah, just then it goes by a lot. Kucha style type of, type of deal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a plus one. That's cool. And the BSD cons, I've been experimenting with that. So, hey, it's we're kind of picking all the good parts of all the pre lockdown conferences and picking and choosing and lining them up. Uh, well, there's also like incredibly niche things that people do that are really cool within their very small context, but like are not enough. For you to be like, I can do a talk about this, right? Or, or, like, oh, a, hey, I or a, to... a session based on the format I'm proposing. So actually, that may you know fill in like, okay, where are we at on this wild idea of user space ZFS? Just do a quick, quick brain dump. Um, well, it's also probably useful for things that don't exist yet, where we kind of have an idea that we want to flush out with people. Incubation. Mm -hmm. Nice idea. It, it, are you fine with that term, Andrew? I'm not putting words in. I'm mind. fine with that term. I'm not particularly offended by any term. Hmm. So yeah, I. Uh, I'll no vegans in the uh, in the chat right now. Got it. Interesting. Okay, because this is the kind of feedback that is super helpful because it's your conference, not mine. Well, I might enjoy it, but still. Uh, completely on off topic, Stu, at Bossy, someone said, oh, person A stopped drinking and trusted and trusted them with their single malt collection. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Greg, you've been quiet. What you got? Thoughts on this? Uh, something you want to get out of it? I'm just listening. Uh, like I said uh, last week, my thing I'd like to uh, see talked about or explored is, is the scalability and redundancy failover. Oh, yeah, okay. And I have this broad... Vague Perhaps it doesn't brief, fit. Yeah, for yeah. Me. But let's see. Failover is a good point. And that is also vaguely touched on with this notion of streaming replication, but uh, a, a failover, shall we say? Failover? Um, or fail safe. Uh, what does fail safe mean at your organization? Well, I, I don't use it personally, but uh, I'd rather fail safely than, oh. than I go into some split brain kind of Yes, uh, failing thing, yeah. that makes more sense. Okay, got it. Yeah. Uh, I think like fail safe device in the padded falls versus yeah. landing on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. padded fall. Yes, my 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 biggest uh, concern is that um, as I mentioned, we're we're using a company called uh, Cumulo. Um, mm -hmm. Their 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 big competitor would be Islon, and they both approach the uh, problem with the same solution, which is multiple heads. So like um, one of our uh, production clusters has like uh, 40 nodes in it. And uh, via old man's load balancing with DNS, um, oh. each subsequent client, yeah, yeah. It, okay. it, it, it tends to work out though. I, I, I go and look at the attached clients and it's pretty, pretty consistent, you know, it's a, Interesting, but anyways, um, I, I just find it funny that it costs you thousands of dollars just to get a couple of nodes within, you know, uh, one or two clients of each other. When DNS is able to do that, pretty close to it. Regardless, I digress. Um, but yeah, so so uh, that's the way, or that's what I'd like to see, is um how 
how people would be approaching scaling that out so it's multiple heads. Um, the biggest ZFS cluster I had was with four heads, but we we're using uh, RSA's uh, um, failover stuff from Veritas, I think they got it from. Um, that was years ago, and that didn't work uh, amazingly well. Uh, so the heads, uh, if a head failed over, the file system went in the read only. Um, There's no data loss and whatnot. It only usually took a couple minutes to get things sorted yeah. out, but yeah, okay. exactly. Oh, yeah. that's a flashback. Oh, yeah. sorry, man. Oh, man. I, I have that certification somewhere in my history. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're cluster. Yeah, they're they're the yeah they're 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 the kings of license and uh, segmentation or however you'd want to articulate that. But yeah, it's like oh, you want that feature? Yeah, we figured you might. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. They've just been a license uh, license company that also happens to have a software product. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, it's a them law firm Oracle. with a license function and a product <laughs> yeah. somewhere down there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think okay. uh, I think it's them and Oracle that we can blame for all of our licensing stresses today. But um, anyway, so yeah, uh, that, okay. that's that's what I'd like to see. Is uh, so when I think about it, um, I think about Luster with ZFS on the back end. I I, I don't know if there's something better. Nowadays, it's been a few years since I got my head into it, but um, as, as I mentioned, I set up a ZFS machine here, and um, I made it all that it could be from one head, like with flash everywhere, so I could put it. Yeah. Um, and and it worked for the project, but um, whenever the render farm would hit it, it would be under uh, duress for for quite a while. Uh, yeah. And that's you know, I only had eighty spindles uh, hidden as opposed to uh, thousands of spindles so so that that's the kind of thing that that i'd be interested in at a conference is seeing how that's handled and, and it kind of bothers me because uh, i might have a distorted reality but I, I thought that a lot more research centers and whatnot would be using zfs and perhaps that's what they're doing um i worked at the uh, uh, yeah. cancer research for a little while and when i mm -hmm. left i maintained contact with them and the last I heard was that they're trying out Lustre with ZFS on the back end, but um, I've lost contact with. He's moved on to another job still. So. Um, like uh, it, Brian B. <laughs> What's yeah, he doing? Wasn't it HP? Weren't they doing HPC at Los Alamos that they have the big ZFS? Yes. Uh, Gary Greider, is it? Gary, yes. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. Sorry, I can't drop into the SNIA SDC. It's during Eurobasic Con. I'll look up what he was up to. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, between Stu and I have bumped into these people. Let's at least see what we can, you know, slot into lightning talks, slot into broader sessions. Um, I think I want this to be a bit how it's a good term not brutal but uh very little introductory content i want to go from zero to 60 on these topics and maybe even have uh materials in advance and then blast out documentation you know mid-process i mean why is it when you have a room of 200 people at a conference you have 200 people taking 200 different notepad docs like what if we actually had a <laughs> more of a secretary type to uh keep track an ai secretary <laughs> where's the button on that let me <laughs> yeah, you it yourself. Good work. <laughs> got an app for that right yeah okay why have 70 people keep notes in 75 places uh yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe AI, but you know, grumble, grumble. I was joking there. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I it, it's good. I'm good. So, uh, yeah, uh, I I want to just innovate on what's been done over the decades, and all of us have attended enough conferences that we know the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's find a format that just is like aggressive knowledge transfer <laughs> or something. <laughs> this is a draft term, but. Uh, Aggressive knowledge. Uh, 
uh, aggressive or what in uh, a transfer fucking type uh yeah c- uh, feel free to noodle on what how to convey that but yeah i really want that efficient efficient knowledge transfer rather than okay well zfs is a file system and volume manager and we could it. spike the coffee with amphetamines that would i help. did order some uh, mate, <laughs> yerba mate powder which some some people do their tea some do the canned stuff i'm like i'm gonna cut right to the <laughs> i'm gonna cut out the middleman see what i can do yeah, it's just caffeine by another name it's it's got a you know l-theanine in it that that helps and a couple other things there you so, go you, you can try a uh, yaupon is the uh, the closest uh the north american really? yeah it's a how's that spelled a, yeah, uh, Y-A-U-P-O-N, and it's Ilex vomitoria because um, illiterate European colonizers saw some dudes drinking a bunch of stuff that had that and threw up. Um, and so they were like, it must make you throw up. And it turns out, no, it's just oh, like Ilex a cousin from... of Yerba Mate that they cut with something else and had a weird ritual with. Don't overdose um, with that. Okay, what yeah, states is that uh, available in? Um, all of them, I think. It's from oh, the really? south. Yeah. It grows oh, in the south. Oh, south. Um, okay, cool. Well, but uh, yeah, no, I only found out about it recently, and I was like, "Oh, hey, look, it's a cousin plant. That's cool. They're both holly plants, so it's basically the same thing." I think I don't know. Uh, okay. TBD. Yes. Uh, How's that for aggressive knowledge transfer? It is, <laughs> and perhaps aggressive uh, stomach emptying. So there we go. Ah, uh, so cool. Uh, efficient knowledge transfer. So. And I do have a few books on the topic. I re- I just want to not re- rinse and repeat the same darn thing that conferences have done for decades. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I don't know if those telepresence robots are still in fashion, but it's like this, you know, you can drive around a little robot and, and walk up to people and your faces on the little iPad built in or something. Uh, let me see. I know Dan Langell used one once upon a time. Uh, telepresence. I can tell you I have always officially hated those things. Yeah? What do you, you, you punch the <sighs> things? I mean, oh, they're only six grand on Amazon. Hey, okay, yeah. Hmm. Oh, we've got a couple of them here. And oh, do you? What I fi- yeah, yeah, what I find is that Usually they're being used by someone who has nothing to do to bug people who have something <laughs> that they absolutely have to be doing right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can't hit me in the face when I ask you for this. Usually me. The telepresence robot. Um, uh, I like those that... meeting owl guys. Personal. The most like amusing the one I had was, or I, I saw was um, um, Richard Garriott's had a little shield and sword on his. <laughs> that was amusing. Hmm. That could yeah. be a, that could be a separate event as a telepresence robot jousting. Exactly. The, the <laughs> I could see him there. doing it. <laughs> okay, tell me about the meeting owl. I see a. Uh, it's a speaker thing. microphone with a 180 degree camera on top, um, ah. but the software does a nice job of picking up on the direction that the audio comes from, and then pointing the camera in that direction, effectively or cutting the, the image into that direction and tracking. We, cool. we used to use it a lot um, at my old work, which was just a small team that had to talk with one other small team. Um, and uh, yeah, it was pretty nice. It, um, it made the you know conference environment or conference room environment less um, less difficult to work with. Um, and it just, uh, you know, it's, it's a bunch of proprietary gobbledygook on the inside, but you plug it into a machine and it just sees it as, a, as an input. Um, cool. No, no software necessary. Welcome, um, Daniel. So for the for the knowledge transfer thing, um, what if they were just codified uh, like Google Drive um, or uh, Google Docs links already pre-made? Uh, I have someone like on lines, and I have someone working on Calabora for exactly that reason. And I know Daniel. Mm, okay. Like only offer um, yes to so... avoid the possibility of getting brigaded by mm. random sweaty nerds uh, on the internet. Some kind of like pre opt in process like hey do you want to be in this thing yeah sign um, up for this just, sign up for that maybe okay yeah, but like the contact at the top that says hey email here if you want to be given you know uh, permissions to, well, to edit presumably everyone who is signing up for the conference is doing their email so at least You're with right. google docs it's a good yep. start you can just yep. yep use their email yep 
Um, so, Danielle, if it's not obvious, we're talking about the upcoming conference or oh, summit, which has gone live yesterday morning. So you are totally welcome to check out the wiki and what we've been discussing, but we're narrowing in on topics and just strategies to very, very efficiently get through, you know, uh, well, knowledge transfer is a topic that uh, a phrase that's come up in so far as we have experts talking to experts, let's not do introductory topic uh, content. That's what I'm trying to say. So nice. Uh, yeah. And actually for the, those present, uh, any favorite events that get this, writer than most i made up a word there or events that just get this wrong i guess that's most of them but um if if i don't know all things open some event that or totally non-tech events that just really get telepresence and efficient engagement right and we can steal ideas from more accurately <laughs> So you're saying we have to pioneer it. Fine. Challenge accepted. Um, yeah, I think, you know, there's trade-offs to, to a lot of these things. It's, I mean, I think the biggest issue with at least a lot of the ones that I'm aware of is they're very, I, I'm more familiar with the very large scale type events, which like has trade shows? very, like what? Like trade shows? Yeah. Which okay. has very different concerns, yeah. Than I think what we're looking at. Like, I mean, I've gone to VMworld a few times oh, yes. and and, yeah. and that stuff. Yeah, the e even their small things that yeah. they're doing are not are, have different concerns than I think what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of that's just traditional uh, one to many, one directional marketing. And nope, we're good. Uh, yeah, that's, your guns that, at the door. that's a very good point, too. So the way that this weekly meeting works is we have a designated driver, which is you. Um, what if we had designated drivers for each of the talks for, for the document so that it's not anybody punches anything in there? They can if they want to. But sure. there is only somebody. Yeah. Or, you know, Honorary you can call them moderators. That's cool, too, yep. I guess. That's, that's my preferred term. Designated driver is more for the the whiskey tasting for afterwards. But, yes, yeah, uh, <laughs> no takers. Uh, yes. It's not so much that that um, I think that Michael's a, you know a designated note taker is that most of the time nobody else is in there doing anything. Right. It, it, it's it's happenstance, not design. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's honey, true. that's true of like all volunteering in environments. It's like. Uh, yeah, and there were some interesting talks at Fossey about like, you know, uh, equity and exploitation. It's like, wait, if someone just stands up and does stuff that no one else wants to do, are they... All like, the time, yeah. yeah. Are they uh, abusing themselves? Or is that... You know, it's like, what? It's a it's a fascinating dynamic, and I don't know if uh, we will... Well, it's a, it's a corollary to the bystander effect, right? It's like, uh, oh, somebody will surely take care of this. Right, right. And as if you designate one person, then at least that, uh, like I said, just gets the ball rolling. Yep. So, uh, one thought. F effect, if I can type. F F F F F F F uh, maybe simple little badges that say, "Hey, ask me about replication. Ask me about scaling. Ask me about thing." Uh, just in so far as. Uh, knowing that someone is somewhat pre-primed on the topic. And actually, unconferences are great about that. It's like, okay, scaling nerds go in this corner, then... I, ha I have seen that, corner. them um, try to do the similar thing yeah. at VMworld, where they oh, okay. the little the little pins indicating that you at least have an interest in a topic mm -hmm. to help get people who have similar interests talking to each other. I don't know how well it worked out, but... Sure. And of course, oh. I'm horrible because I'm interested in all the topics. All the things. Well, cool. That's valid. That's valid. Um, cool. And I, I think the more we prime this in advance, be it a week before, be it a month before, just you know, the more people stand up ahead of time and say, "Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. Ask me anything on this topic." That saves a whole lot of just 
accidentally bumping into people, you know, over coffee, which is well, great. But I, I do want to just really uh, make. We also, this- we also have the reality of it's going to be, you know, not five thousand people either. Correct. Yes, it's pretty. Going to be sub hundred, probably right. Yes, uh, we're initially capping at 75 we could do more but we're just going to play it by ear and see how that goes um yeah so it's it's, take it. it's going to be more instrument by design anyway. by design. correct absolutely absolutely what's so, the um the and of course time. everyone knows everyone in open zfs but yeah no i hope to broaden this more than hey alan hey matt okay what's the um, distribution going to be roughly between them um, in person versus remote if you had to guess uh, it's defaulting to 100% in-person and then interested people remote. So let's explore what mechanisms allow that to shift. <laughs> I mean, what what's the top three things that need to happen? I mean, a Slack channel was not enough last year. Um, so, yeah. Because with the Slack channel, uh, the badge, so the, the only problem I, I see with badges, and this is before knowing that it'd be mostly 100% uh, in-person, Mm-hmm. Um, would be that you know the badges you'd want to set them up in such a way where you can see the topic, you know, clearly through a webcam, and then you know have in small text around it. Uh, but that that rapidly becomes untenable when you know people take them off, or you know you have to make them obnoxiously large. But if you're using a Slack channel, you could have that uh, tie-in where it's like, hey, you know, you will have this as part of your Slack profile saying, "Ask me about such and such a thing." Um, I don't know what the juice to squeeze ratio is going to be there if, if it's going to be very few. The what if ratio? The juice to squeeze juice ratio to squeeze. is going to be if. Uh, I have not heard that um, term. Um, oh, no. <laughs> uh, whoa. Really? Okay. Um, no. Uh, do tell. Can you enlighten our listeners? Yeah. The, the, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. You never heard that phrase? You ever try to squeeze blood out of a stone? Similar. Well, idea. I've heard of it. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> Not to, not to mix metaphors too, too much, but, you know, we'll burn yeah, that bridge yeah. when we get to it. <laughs> the, the idea is that it takes, there are some things that take so much effort to, to right. squeeze, but give give you no significant amount of juice to drink for doing it. So the juice isn't worth a squeeze. Yeah. You know, you ever have kumquat juice? Me neither. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I would, yes. My, my grandparents had a, uh, a farm with such things. Okay. So that said, um, Please think about what events perhaps during lockdown worked well for you and what techniques work. Because, hey, with one BSD con, we had this nifty app that had virtual people in a room and you sort of nudged your way towards others and the audio would follow and you heard that huddle of people rather than like just one to many, hear everything in the room. Good luck. Okay. What uh, if we had a volunteer who was the digital, who, who was the 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 stand-in. So we were talking about, you know, I'm going to mute for a second. See what my uh, oh, whiteboard. Yeah. Because if it's only like two or three folks, right? Like we'd have one person who's like, okay, yeah, well, I liked as the, the, you know, person who moves the brains and jars around and acts as a, you know, it's easier to ping one dude on one laptop, right? To say, yeah. hey, what's the ask ask about this thing ask about this thing um rather than uh yeah the, the trying the, to yeah the mc van request do you think that would be organized by topic or like hey andrews the annuals the replication mc or something we can, uh, we, can we can shuffle it but it comes down to is you don't want the person that is asking the question to be the one answering the question or it gets really boring really quick. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you want some yeah, you want somebody else who's got like the questions coming in from outside the venue to then ask it, you know, say so and so asks this and then asking the person who's who's talking and then can then respond to that. I, I very much agree that yeah. feels better. Uh, IRC. Okay. Cool. Um, and have you seen that successfully done somewhere? It came to me in a dream. Awesome. <laughs> I like your dreams. Actually, the OpenZFS conference two or three years ago did that pretty well. 
I can't tell you specifically where I've seen it done, but I'm pretty sure I have. Cool. Sorry for being vague. I wasn't planning on a, planning on a quiz today. Hey, that's, that's how we roll. It's it's a step up from it came to me in a dream. So I think we set the floor <laughs> low enough that that's <laughs> you clear the bar. There you go. Well, anything else? Or I, I this is totally an excellent start. Food for thought. Start thinking about what you know topics you want to adopt. I want, for lack of a better term ownership in these things from people just because hey it's your event make it rock uh daniel what's on your mind if i may um <clears throat> juice uh squeezing, juice, squeezing blood juice. whiskey yeah okay cool <laughs> candy uh, kumquats is on the mind yeah <laughs> yeah uh not not too much i'm just uh just Z zfsing it yeah, just, just you know. Uh, yeah, nothing new. Just uh, doing some tweaks to the old Zelda. So I'm trying to get another version out there. There are a couple promises I made in the talk that I think are uh, could be better baked. They're partially baked, but need to be completely baked. So your um, name came up regarding channel programs. Were you? And I use the Zelta as an example, like kind of covering both ends of the, the equation. Uh, did you indeed stick your nose into channel programs and find that you're missing some pretty obvious things? There you go. Uh, you think you think so? I'm I'm missing some stuff. I I don't know. I haven't uh, dug into channel programs much. Okay. Then maybe as Jan who's finding that he couldn't do a clone or something, and so I can. Yeah, and, uh, oh I, I yeah, know for sure. Jan has got things got that he wants to do with channel programs that he can't. Got it. Perfect. Thank you. Well, there's a right. It was topic. yeah. It was cloning. Yeah, it was definitely it was definitely related to uh, to cloning stuff. Got it. Because um, he specifically wants the clones to have the same to have the same um, transaction group ID or something. Transaction like group. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with one oh, ID or the uh, TXG. Thank you. Um, uh, I I will even spare you some Attack of the Clones, Joe. So anyway, uh, oh, we had a track earlier. Okay. Uh, registration is open. We're looking for sponsors. Make your name. Be famous. Be awesome. Um. Any any unique food requests at the super early stage? Like, oh, we hear there's a great Cuban place in Portland, which there is. And should we look into like having them, you know, cater one of the um, one um, of them? Kind of food truck theme a day. That is also very much a Portlandy thing. So uh, I totally defer to locals. I find that's always the best policy. Sure, sure, sure. Food trucks. Um, a lot along those same lines. Is there, um, like parking for an RV or something down there? There is room for that. We'd have to kind of okay. uh, work it out in advance. But um, is that for yourself or someone you know? Uh, potentially, if we're basically keep the traveling and the chaos down to a minimum, like bring the RV down and camp and be on site. Oh, I see. Okay. I like it. Oh, cause you're close, but yeah, yeah I see, I see your challenge. Yeah. <laughs> you're close, close, but not that close. <laughs> yeah. Close, but it, then you have to deal with whatever the hell has happened to Portland traffic in the last three months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How many foot is that RV? uh 37 Woo. okay it's for dog shows you are full of surprises i like it i like it okay um anything else well, at this time a group that i know about on uh yeah i'm gonna want to know more about this later but uh this the yeah dog um, show and master i mean users uh wait, wait what okay go ahead 
um uh, but on on similar topic um s uh, splitting rooms if people still want to do that sort of thing where it's like oh hey you know we got uh Yeah. That is a Don't very good remove point. it too. Um, I'm good. For, uh, I'm good to do that. I'm I'm perfectly happy splitting a room with somebody. Uh, Yeah. you know, I, but there's just so, put up a list somewhere so people could say, okay, well, I'm looking. Uh, you know, I don't want to pay for a whole thing. Who's who's yeah. already on this? Oh, that's a very good point. So there is no hotel super close to the venue. So, but there is decent public transportation, and depending on traffic, Lyft and Uber is like ten minutes. So. I think enough you know, coordinating that is not so bad. Well, I I did find, let me just throw this one point out there, which is the, the light rail and the bus intersect within a block of each other. So that any hotel near there is a great idea. And I'm, I'm, I might just periodically search it and say, Hey, this seems to be a good price. Pleasant. We can kind of have, have informal events there. Go ahead, Andrew. Formal. Meeting. I, I'm not completely sure on this yet, but I'm inclined to personally rent a car. I don't know what parking will look like in general, but Uh, downtown a nightmare at the center easy so if you want to sleep in that car you're set but um I, i'd say you don't need one because Stu, back me up here the light rail to downtown is really straightforward and cheap and reasonably yeah, as ignore as the long issue as you, shitty as long guy as you stay on that side of the river yes okay. <laughs> i'm on the other side of the river which is there are only two access mechanisms without a boat right <laughs> correct you guys have working light rail that's crazy Where, where can we get some? We don't know what that means in Boston anymore. We used to have that. It went Used away. to have it. Goodness, well, coming from LA, yeah, they pioneered <laughs> yeah. that, and then like, yeah, no. Yeah, um, you, you, you missed my train rant earlier. Yeah, you missed that just before the recording. <laughs> we did yeah. it for for uh, you know for those of you keeping track at home. We had uh, you know obligatory Star Trek reference, obligatory Star Wars reference, obligatory uh, nerds going off about public transit related uh, matters. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's a, like it's a, a good bingo card. Yep. Yeah. Well, I don't know if Doc's is on there, but it should be. It, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gang. I say please digest those topics and think about where you can just take ownership in some aspect of it. Um, we uniquely don't have Jan today. He had just some earlier topics from way back, like an arc management proof of concept that can wait. I'm excited. This is all kind of uh, moving forward. And I hope to see some of you at the event. Anything else? Oh, I can subscribe. Well played. Well played. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day, Thanks guys. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Well, yeah. Take care, everyone.